In the quiet village of Mutasa, a harrowing crime shook the community to its core. It was a crime that seemed to defy reason, a senseless act of brutality that claimed the innocent lives of two children. Mary Kanira, a resident of Mutasa, returned home from her undertakings at around 3 p.m. on the 13th of April 2021. She expected to find her grade one daughter, Melissa Benza, home from school, but the toddler had not returned. She went to ask her same age and class cousin if he had seen her, but the boy, Dylan, was not home. His mother also claimed that he was yet to return. Grade 1 students are supposed to be home by 12 p.m. and they were already four hours late. They were students at Mbaza Primary School, which was only four kilometers away from the village, and were expected to reach home in 30 minutes. They managed to get hold of the teacher on the phone and she claimed that she had dismissed them a little bit later at 1 p.m. because they had to stay for extra reading lessons with the other slower readers. The villagers then launched a search party at around 5 p.m. to look for the two cousins but could not find any leads. Some people at the school then mentioned that Solomon Manyama, 48 years of age, who was Dylan's maternal uncle, had been at the school for an SDC meeting. Maybe he had seen the cousins. When they queried him, he claimed that he had walked with them but had parted with them near their homes. The search resumed the next day with the involvement of students from Baza primary and high schools. It led to a gruesome discovery, a patch of grass stained with blood and a trail leading to a blood toilet where the children's bodies were found. Both had a deep cut on the left side of their necks, a wound that would be identified as the cause of death. The village was in a state of shock and disbelief. Solomon was questioned by another villager, Mr. Nobet Chiromba, over the phone, but then he changed his story raising suspicion of his involvement. He indicated over the phone that he had left the children near Nyagabu River, which meant that he was hiding something. When the police were called, they made him their first suspect and took him for questioning. He implicated Pasmo Sambasa. Miss Aida Pandukari, who is Sambasa's mother, found a blood-stained hole and trouser at their homestead. She also said that she had seen him walking in the forest with the cousins following closely behind. Solomon told the police that alongside his accomplice, Pasmo Sambaza, they had lured the children to an abandoned homestead. The naive, trusting children followed their uncle, did not know. The naive and trusting children followed their uncle not knowing that it was their last day. There, in a chilling act that was driven by ritualistic motives, they slit the throats of the innocent children and collected their blood, which they were planning to use for money rituals. The children had been a human sacrifice. The children had been a human sacrifice for them to make money. In court, witnesses included Dylan's mother, Lydia Manyama. She gave a heart-wrenching testimony that painted a vivid picture of the events and the devastating impact on their families. Justice Isaac Muzenda of the Mutare High Court, Justice Isaac Muzenda of the Mutare High Court found them both guilty of murder and sentenced them both to life imprisonment. He said that their crime was a premeditated act of unspeakable cruelty and deserved no mercy. The community of Mutasa, while still mourning, found some solace in the verdict. This tragic event is a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the depths of human cruelty. The memory of Melissa and Dylan, two children whose lives were cut short in such a brutal manner, will forever be etched in the hearts of those who knew them and the community that grieved for them.